Welcome back for our final segment of Chamber Change TV show brought to us uh, by our sponsor, who we want to thank, Bank Hometown. Um, thrilled to have with us Bill Katsilis, who's the co-owner of Antonio's Pizza by the Slice. Bill, welcome. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me today. Well, uh, first opened in, in Amherst in 1991, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Worcester, but uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about Antonio's history and, and how it got started. Uh, Antonio started a small 800 square foot slice shop up in Amherst back in 1991. Uh, it was early on, uh, there were 25 different types of slices and that was kind of considered a novelty back then. And over the years that uh, through kind of input from the customers and the guests and the employees working there and uh, staff members over the years, it's grown to over 75 different types of slices, anywhere from your basic uh, cheese pizza to to um, avocado quesadilla or mac and cheese uh, pizza. So it's uh, we're kind of known for the uniqueness of our slices and the freshness and the quality of the product that we sell and having a fun time. And it's always been about having fun. So um, well, it quickly you know, those late right. nights with the college Amherst students uh, to, you know, dinner with the family now, it's still about having fun. It's just a different type of fun. Well, all those college students in Amherst who enjoyed the uh, late night slices from Antonio's became ambassadors because uh, you've grown and expanded. And, uh, you know, recently in Worcester, uh, and maybe you could talk a little bit about, you know, the, the reason why Worcester and your roots and, uh, you know, what, what, what's, how's it going there? Yeah, when I partnered into Antonio's, um, I always said, listen, we need to go to Worcester the, the, for a couple of reasons. I think it's a pizza city. I mean, I think there was a study out that there were more pizza places per, per capita in Worcester than anywhere else in the country. Uh, but regardless of that, we just knew that a lot of our, what I call my Amherst faithful had moved out into this central mass area. Um, and I felt that Worcester was just like a perfect place to kind of bridge that gap from the college days to their post-grad days and their starting their young families and young professional days. Um, I had a fondness and keenness to Worcester because um, as I would joke uh, when I was a professional, I would summer in Worcester, meaning, you know, my parents were Greek immigrants. My grandparents uh, uh, moved to Worcester. My mother went to uh, Worcester South. She played field hockey across the street at a uh, Foley Stadium as, as a kid. And um, my grandparents lived there. I still have my grandmother's house there. My grandmother's still alive at 96 years old. And they, you know, worked at Table Talk Pies. Yeah. Went to St. Spirit on Greek Orthodox Church where I was baptized, where my mother was forced to go to Greek school five days a week after regular school back in the 60s. So I have strong ties to Worcester. I have fond memories of going to the mark down to the basement because I knew where the toys were in the back. Um, I was lucky enough to have kind of my immigrant factory working grandparents to buy me my first suit at Shacks. So <laughs> I spent some time in Worcester. As I joked, I summered the My parents were hardworking pizzeria they had a small little pizza shop in Cumberland and we would get dropped off for the summer with the grandparents and we loved every minute of it. Our parents yeah. would have to come visit us. We wouldn't leave. So um, I just knew Worcester would be a great fit. Um, and out of a coincidence of life, um, when Webster five bank was selling their lot next to their new bank over there, one of the vice presidents happened to be a customer of my family restaurant in Cumberland. And he originally reached out to me to put my family's pizzeria out there um, and I was like, no, no, I got something better. And it's, you know, Antonio's Pizza by the Slice. And they jumped all over it. They backed us up with the financing. And that's when you and I met back then right. with uh, kind of the city. You guys helped kind of, you know, green light everything for us so we could get to where we had to, to be to open up and do a ground up construction. So it was, a, it was a great experience from the start. I felt like I was coming home and um, I'm just glad to be there. So thanks for having us. That's right. And, and, and by all accounts, it seems it's, it's been a success, but the COVID situation has thrown some challenges. And maybe you could talk about, you know, challenges that you face, but, you know, right now, even the challenges of, as people look to go back to work and some of the uncertainty, uh, you know, tell us about how, how things are going and, and uh, people are looking for work. Or well, when COVID, when COVID hit, it really, it, it really turned things upside down. Um, you know, it was totally unprecedented. You went from having this big, thriving, bustling dining room business, full bar, outdoor patio to you're shut down. Good luck. Um, and we understood where that was coming from. And, and the fortunate thing is, you know, people that were our 
servers and bartenders, uh, because takeout was still busy, we were like, hey, do you guys want to drive? Can you help us with takeout? And a lot of them say, yes, I, I know you know Henry, um, who's been, you know, yeah. a long time Worcester resident and, and worked for me a long, a long since the day we opened. Um, he became our number one delivery driver and he loved it. And he was like, I, I can't just sit home and do nothing. And, you know, we were safe. We, in, we put in contactless delivery. We were wearing masks, you know, two weeks before the mask mandate came out of an abundance of caution back then. And things were pretty tough those first two months. Um, luckily, uh, when we opened, when they, we did outdoor dining, things took off. We did really well. Um, there were limited hours. So we were kind of trying not to burn the staff out. And honestly, in the last, four or five months has been the toughest time um, as everyone kind of reopened in all industries across the board, uh, finding help to become extremely extreme challenge. Uh, I, I think a lot of it also had to do with the fact that the colleges had sent the kids home. Um, and that kind of really is our front of the house staff um, during the summer. We're starting to see them come back now as schools have told the students we're opening back up. They're moving back into their Worcester apartments and they're showing up now. Um, but April, May, I mean, we were down to three to four servers when we needed to have 18. Um, so it was, it was a little scary. Uh, we were ready to figure out how to adapt and maybe do some self-serve for a while right. at lunches. But uh, I feel like it's coming back. The people are coming back to work. I feel like people know that kind of rest, my business and other restaurants are here to stay. Um, the vaccine rates have been pretty strong in Massachusetts and in the Worcester area. So, I mean, on, on a whole, we're, we, we're feeling good about what was kind of a, I would just say a totally unprecedented and unexpected year. So. No, that, that's a positive. Well, if, if, if people are right now out there looking for a job or, or information about Antonio's, where, where can they go, Bill? Uh, they can go right online and it's uh info at antoniospizza.com they can just call the store and honestly you can walk in and we interview on the spot uh we're doing that at all the antonio's locations because we just realized how competitive it is out there um you know we're happy to have you come in and and meet i mean we're busier than we've ever been the servers make 20 to 30 dollars an hour in tips service and bartenders there you don't need any experience we always train people we have a robust training program even even as an independent operator um and so we kind of give you the tools to succeed. Um, and we want you to be part of the family. And we think it's a fun family. We have a good time doing it. Our guests from the start, from the day we opened through the pandemic till today are, you know, they they truly care about the, the brand, the concept and the people that work there. And they kind of take care of everyone. I mean, people have been extra generous during the pandemic um, and, and still have been. So we appreciate that support too, especially from the, community as a whole right. so i think it's a good experience um and if you've never worked in the restaurant business come on down so i think antonio's a good spot to start well bill katsillas thanks uh it's great to uh, hear about those worcester roots and and the future where uh, antonio yeah. and, and i wish the mart was still open i take my daughter to get her <laughs> i well. remember the mart as well i'm sure a lot of my viewers do bill katsillas, right. thanks for being with us and to our viewers we're going to wrap up this edition of chamber exchange the tv show